What's going on, all you creatures of the night? Ooh. Your two favorite vampire uncles back here for Sin Fellas, and we're back for more 31 Days of Horror. I'm Count Logan Myers. That's my good mate over there. And I'm Henry Hill. And tonight, we are talking about another Stephen King adaptation. It's been a Stephen King theme thus far here in these 31 Days of Horror. We are going over another adaptation of one of his novels. This time, of course, having to do with vampires, like you mentioned. This one starred David Soul. We are talking about Salem's Lot. Stephen King, the best-selling author of Carrie and The Shining, takes you on a startling journey to Salem's Lot. Second Stephen King novel that was published back in 1975. Of course, this was adapted for the small screen. This is a TV series I did for a few nights on CBS, and you know why it's probably dumbed down a little bit in terms of some of the gore. Uh, but this is a big deal back in 1979 coming out. You know, David Soul was a heartthrob back then. Starsky and Hutch, so he was a household name. People knew about him, and he plays pretty much the hero in this tale. He plays the author and novelist. Ben Mears, he shows up in the small town of Jerusalem's Lot, and they shortened it Salem's Lot, of course, uh, moves into town trying to write this book, and he has eyes on the Marston house, which is like the spooky house up on the hill, much like Psycho meets Adam's family. Really cool looking house. Wants to, you know, own the house and finds out Richard Straker, which is played by the late great James Mason, has already purchased the house and, of course, sets up the rest of the movie. Yeah, he sees that he buys a house and instantly you can see something is off with the guy. There's something he's hiding, you know, and there's this feel that the house is like a character in itself. Like there's a dark, something dark there emanating from the house. It looks spooky. It looks like a haunted house. Looks like the Bates, you know, house, uh, you know, much like that. So it, it has this large presence. This is a, a mini series, and you know it's a movie. You could say too when you put it all together. Really, a long movie, about three hours long. Um, aired back in '79, like you mentioned. I had never seen this before. This was one that I never rented or had seen along the years. So I was anxious to see this. I had seen some pictures from it, seen the vampire from the film with the yellow eyes and everything. So. When it was announced that they're remaking this, and the remake is going to be dropping on Max here in this month of October, of course, we're going to be reviewing the new one. So I wanted to go back and make sure I watched this, and I'm glad I did. But yeah, like you mentioned, I love the setup, the town itself, you know, being in Maine, you know, Stephen King loves this area. He always has this, you know, this these towns in Maine as a backdrop, and here we're in New England here and he's dealing with vampires and very, very interesting uh, having this author go in, obviously, you know, based a lot on himself, Stephen King writing uh, this character of Ben Mears, a uh, really likable guy moving into town. He strikes up this relationship uh, with this woman right away and, you know, kind of gets the town talking about him. There's a lot of gossip with it being a small, you know, tight knit community and then you add on top of it this creepy house and, uh, you know, the guy that has purchased it there and he's he comes there and he wants to write about this house. But then there's this guy there, um, you know, and eventually he has these movers go and pick up something for him and haul it back to the house. And that's kind of like the, the mystery, finding out what that is and having those movers bring this uh, big box, this uh, wooden fragile box, you know, bringing it back. And, you know, you find out that uh, they're bringing back basically the head vampire. <laughs> and <laughs> that's when things start going wrong for this small town in New England. I couldn't see that coming with that huge crate that they had and it was moving. <laughs> yeah. And there's something yeah. totally off about it. Super like, yeah, cold. Yeah. <laughs> super cold, right? Moving it down to the uh, basement of the Marsden house was <laughs> really funny. And that character, Jeffrey Lewis, that I, I recognized right away. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, Juliet Lewis's dad, he was in a bunch of movies back that day. He played Mike, was one of the guys helping move in the crate. And of course, weird things start happening in this town. You know, one by one, people go missing, find out what's happening to them. Essentially, you know, the vampire turned 
everybody else into vampires. It's a town of vampires, and what are they going to do to stop this? So that's really when um, you see Ben Mears' character and then uh, Mark, who's the young kid, which I really related to in this film, being you know a kid really into horror, having the horror posters in my room and stuff. I thought he was really fantastic. They got to put their heads together and figure out how they're going to stop this. Stop you know these vampires from taking over the town. Having seen this now, I can see where Fright Night got a lot of its inspiration yep. from. It, it mirrors that heavily just with the characters themselves. The kid there, you know, is a big movie buff too, has all the masks, is into magic. And yeah, that, that makes it a lot of fun watching it, especially if you're a younger person and you haven't watched this back when you were a kid. Me, I missed it, but I could see the appeal of this. And I just wonder why they didn't sh make this uh, more available for people over the years. Like it should have been shown on USA, you know, all those years. Somehow I missed it, but <laughs> I'm glad I finally got around to watching it. It was really good, really solid. And I, I can't wait for the remake just because this one, like you mentioned, it was made for TV. So they couldn't really get away with showing a lot of blood and, and gore. Um, but they did a good job setting the mood in this film. You know, it was very creepy, very unsettling. The look of the house itself was great. The practical effects were all terrific. The performances were great here. You had a lot of TV um, and uh, movie stars in this uh, miniseries, and uh, they all did a great job. I thought uh, I thought the, the lead there, uh, David Sola's Ben Mears, was really a great character, uh, this author. And seeing a young Fred Willard in it was pretty cool. He was like the real estate guy that's sleeping with the guy's wife. And that whole scene where the, the husband catches him in the act was pretty awesome and stands out for me too. Um, so yeah, I had a great time with this. This is directed by Tobe Hooper, Toby Hooper, uh, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Fun House. Uh, so Poltergeist. it's no, yeah, Poltergeist, a legend. You know, so I could see why they hired him to do this. And it, it really was a really awesome mini series here. I'm glad we got to check this out for the 31 Days of Horror. And uh, I, I want to watch this again. I'll watch this again after I watch the remake because it was really well done. A little long, but just because it was a mini series, they could have trimmed it down, made it a movie. But uh, all in all, this was a, a great watch. I can't believe you never saw this as a kid. I remember being on like TNT or something, but yeah, not like the other networks you would say or anything mm -hmm. a movie you see late at night right or even on friday nights too i remember watching this as a kid this and dark shadows the old tv show the vampires loved it big part of my childhood why i've always loved vampires obviously the lost boys but this one mm -hmm. it's been a minute since i've seen it but rewatching it had a blast yeah it's a bit long three three and a half hours you know but showing on tv for a few nights it makes sense but uh mm -hmm. i was invested i love the characters i love revisiting salem's lot it's been a, been a minute like i said david soul james mason was amazing in this movie i loved his character and his shop in town and everything that ensues in this film having to do of course with the vampire and the rest of the people turning into vampires and how they're going to stop this set up a whole bunch of iconic scenes one that still scares me to this day watching this as a kid. Yeah. The kid vampire floating and open the window. And, you know, that was creepy. Creepy yeah, as hell. You couldn't see the wires or anything either. I was no. looking for wires. Yeah. Creepy and effective. It still works yeah. all these years later. One that always just stands out in my mind. Scares the hell out of me. Great practical effects work, costume design. It was shot really well. Toby Hooper did a really great job of building suspense without really any gore. I think the use of contacts and their eyes and the makeup work and the way they move at times was really unsettling and still holds up and really love this movie. I need to go back and reread the book. It's been a while and get ready for the brand new film dropping this month in October so we can review it. Had a great time. Perfect movie to watch during 31 Days of Horror with your loved ones and even kids. I think it's Salem's Lot. It'll <laughs> Hooper, 1979. I'm going to give it a four and a half. Out of five vampire hair pieces. Hell yeah, Tobe Hooper, another winner for him here. Glad I checked this out. This was awesome to see for the first time, you know, and uh, a movie that I'm going to watch again. And I'm looking forward to the remake, see how, uh, you know, he's able to uh, make the movie gorier and see if they still have the same iconic scenes with the kid behind you and the look of the vampire. Everything looked fantastic in this movie. And uh, overall, 
a great adaptation of the Stephen King novel. So with that being said, I am going to give Salem's Lot, I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five Stephen King hair pieces. So I want to hear from all you horror hounds out there. What did you like about Salem's Lot? What didn't you like about it? Have you read the book? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to stab, subscribe. Through the heart. Check out these old hound dogs on Facebook, X, and Instagram and our website, cinefells.com for the latest, greatest TV, movie, news, and horror reviews. That's right. All month long, all October, the 31 Days of Horror. Make sure to check out our videos every single day. We're going to be dropping a new one each of the 31 days in October. So if you love horror as much as us, you're going to love the 31 Days of Horror. So thank you for watching our review of 1979's Salem's Lot. And until the next time when we review the reboot, I'm Uncle Henry King. And I'm Uncle Logan Soul. Signing out <laughs> until the next horror review for 31 Days of Horror. Cheers!